Today I wanted to spotlight another underappreciated game, Castlevania II Belmont's Revenge for the original Game Boy, released back in August of 1991. I feel like this is a title that has gotten some more positive attention in the retro community in recent years, and I think this is due to a couple reasons. One, possibly, is that it was re-released for the first time on Konami's Castlevania Anniversary Collection back in 2019. Beyond this, though, it had never seen the light of day before its original release, even on stuff like Nintendo's Virtual Console. Another possible reason is that the increasing cost for the physical game itself, perhaps due to its rare release and or potentially low sales. I mentioned in my series of shorts featuring my recollecting Game Boy Collection of Youth that I was able to snag a copy of this game, although it did cost me roughly what you see in the picture here from PriceCharting.com, but hey, at least I got it again. But jumping right back into it, what makes this game so great are the improvements they did compared to the first entry of this Game Boy series. This first entry, Castlevania The Adventure, had a number of issues. The hero, Christopher Belmont, moves extremely slow. He has no sub-weapons such as the holy water available to him in the console iterations, no checkpoints if the player dies, and overall level design is lackluster. Also, while there are whip upgrades in this game, they're lost if the player takes damage at all. The best part about this first iteration has to be the music. While the Game Boy itself doesn't provide the highest quality of audio, it is still a Castlevania title and they're almost always having fantastic music. This second entry, Belmont's Revenge, takes everything that was from the first entry and improves upon it in every way. Where the first one had only four levels, the sequel has six. The Holy Water and Axe are finally added as sub-weapons, although there are no double shot and triple shot items, which would allow for more than one of these sub-weapons to be thrown at a time. Checkpoints are added, whip upgrades aren't lost if hit, unless being hit by a specific enemy that throws fireballs called a Punaguchi, I don't make up the names, and the level design is quite innovative and creative. Christopher Belmont also moves quicker. Okay, sure, he's no Sonic the Hedgehog or even Mario, but he at least moves at a speed somewhat close to his console counterparts in the Castlevania series. The music, like the first entry, is also composed by Hirohiro Funauchi, and I also think this is an improvement as well. The audio quality of these tunes actually do sound a little bit better, but even the songs that appear themselves are the best for the series on this handheld. Probably the best song in the game is the theme that plays in the Cloud Castle stage called Praying Hands. Something about this song and theme overall just slaps really hard and makes an even more amazing metal soundtrack as featured here by YouTuber Feezawompers and a link to his YouTube channel it will be in the description below. The overall story for Belmont's Revenge is standard Castlevania fare. Dracula's back, dead and loving it. Set 15 years after the last entry, Dracula has kidnapped Christopher Belmont's son Soleil during his vampire hunter coming of age cotillions and has turned him into one of Dracula's demons. Now it's up to Christopher to take back his son and defeat Dracula once and for all, at least until the next game. Just like a Mega Man game, the player can choose between four different castles to go through in any order. Once completed with these four, there are two more stages to go, with Christopher facing off against his son in the penultimate fight before facing off against Big Daddy himself, Dracula. Christopher, of course, wins the day, and the end sees both father and son watching the smited ruins of Castlevania collapsing once again. With the combined powers of both Belmonts promising continued generations of vampire hunters and the respective video games. With only a total of six levels and seven bosses, in no way is Belmont's Revenge a long game. But I'd probably equate the game's length to something akin to the first Castlevania game on the NES, though they've also added a password system to Belmont's Revenge, so thankfully the player doesn't have to beat it in one go like this in the NES entry or even the first Game Boy entry. And Belmont's Revenge isn't the most perfect entry though. Some of the platforming can be difficult with precise timing needed, especially with the spears that protrude out at specific intervals in the rock castle and last couple stages. Most of the boss fights are fun and varied, although a couple of them are tough and sometimes unfair. Grand Bone Dragon, I'm looking at you. 
One odd thing with these bosses is that to activate them appearing, the player has to pick up a whip upgrade orb at the end of the stages, which is a little weird. Regardless, Belmont's Revenge is a great 2D romp in the world of Castlevania, one that is worth your time if you like the series and or tough action platformers. As mentioned earlier, this is available on the Castlevania Anniversary Collection for all major consoles as well as PC Steam. Now, have you heard of, of this specific Castlevania entry? Let me know in the comments section below. I'm also curious to hear what your favorite entry in Castlevania is. For me, and specifically in the vein of the 2D and non-Metroidvania games, it goes Castlevania 1 on the NES having the best music, best stage design goes to Castlevania Bloodlines on the Genesis, and best single theme being Simon's theme in Super Castlevania 4. Now what is my favorite Castlevania game of all time? Stick around and find out on my next top 10 list that I may end up doing about the Castlevania series. And to do so, make sure you subscribe and ring that bell for notifications. Do you like that segue? Anyway, going forward, I'm going to keep touching upon more games that are, I feel are, are, are kind of under, underappreciated, such as like The Lost Vikings on the SNES and Sega Genesis, or even the more newer released Bravely Default 2. Thanks again for watching and have a great day.